everyone. This is Nick Dearbertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about simple time series forecasting in Python. This is part of our lecture segment on free cash flow estimation and forecasting, which is part of our broader goal in the course to build out the full discounted cash flow valuation of stock. So we uh, already covered an introduction on forecasting and the simple forecasting models and also how to go about the forecast in Excel. So take a look at those videos. Um, now we're getting to carrying out the process in Python. So uh, let's jump over to the Jupyter Notebook example for this, which is on the course site. And uh, here we're going to load in the same data that we used in the Excel exercise, um, sales and cost of goods sold for three different periods. Um, and we're gonna try and forecast the next period into the future. So uh, just as we had seen with other financial statement data, we should set uh, the first column as the index so that we can easily look up these items by their names. I will also solve this unnamed issue here um, and allow the date columns to work appropriately. So um, the first step in the forecasting process is to examine the history. Um, and so we can plot it, um, but you can't just easily plot the data in this format. Really, we need it to be flipped because uh, we're plotting over the index, the, the each column over the index. Um, so with this, we would have like a 2017, a 2018, and a 2019 plot that connects sales and cost of goods sold, not what we want. So thankfully with Pandas, we can do dot capital T and that transposes the data frame. Uh, so now we have the columns as those statement items and the rows as the time periods, which is the format we need to be able to plot it. So if we just uh, take that transposed data frame and we do a line plot on that, then we can see sales and cost of goods sold over time. Uh, so it kind of goes up and then down. And so the average or recent value approach may be appropriate, but we'll look at uh, all the different simple approaches to see how we can do each of them. So first we can look at the recent value approach. Um, so uh, we're gonna need to pull the um, most recent value of sales and cost of goods sold. So one thing we can do to make our life a little bit easier there is save that last period into a variable. Uh, and we can get that value by looking at the columns of the data frame and taking the max uh, within that. So um, we see that 2019 is the most recent period here. And so now um, we can use df.loc, which gets us the entire row of sales or cost of goods sold. And then also uh, look up the last date within that. So that will get us uh, the most recent period out of uh, whatever time series. So we'll do that for both sales and cost of goods sold. And then because with the recent value model, we just use the recent value going forward. Uh, those are our forecasts. So um, there we have forecasted value for sales, 1100 and for cost of goods sold, 650. Next, we'll look at the average, uh, historical average approach method model for forecasting. So for that, we're just gonna take an average of the historical. So we're gonna pull out that sales row and take the average and pull out that cost of goods sold row and take the average. And those are our forecasts for going forward. So the, the trend is the first one that actually takes a little bit of effort to do. Uh, we need to run an OLS regression uh, with the T, uh, just an uh, incrementing time period variable as the independent variable. Um, and our, uh, our values as the Y. 
and we're going to estimate the intercept and the coefficient that we're going to use in uh, calculating the forecast going forward. So the first thing that we need to do is set up a data frame, which um, is going to be in the structure to run the regression. So we can first grab that sales column out of the data frame and make a new data frame out of that so that now it's in this uh, transposed format. Um, you also could have transposed it and then looks up the sales column. That would have worked as well. Um, and then um, what we want for T is like 0, 1, 2. Um, so we can do that by kind of using Pandas' automatic index to our advantage. So if we use reset index to get rid of uh, this um, date index, here we use drop equals true to make sure it doesn't come in as a column in the data frame. Now we have 0, 1, 2. This is ultimately going to be our T, but we have to get it to come as a column. So we um, do reset index again, this time without the drop. And that says take what was the index and now make it a column in the data frame and generate a new auto incrementing index. Um, so then we can just rename that column as T. Um, and now we have this T column in here. Um, this is certainly not the only approach to getting this uh, T variable, but it's straight, it's a straightforward way to do it. So uh, that was a number of steps there. Uh, and we're going to need to do the same thing for both sales and cost of goods sold. So let's create a function which does those steps for us. Creates the new data frame from that particular um, line item, resets, gets rid of the data index, and then uses the um, auto incrementing index as t. So then we can run that from the original data frame um, and just pick which uh, line item we want to use it on, and it generates the data frame in the correct structure for us. Um, so then the next step is then to run the regression. Um, so here we're using stats models to run the regression, and we're going to run an OLS regression. Um, and whenever our line item we want to predict is going to be the Y, and then uh, the X is going to be the T, and make sure to add the constant. Um, and then we fit the model, and we get the summary of the results. So there we can see the um, intercept was estimated as 1050, and that the coefficient on T is 50. So we can pull those out of the results by uh, accessing dot params on the results and pulling out the const and the t. Uh, so now we have those as individual variables. So now we have fitted the model, we just need to predict. Um, and so the prediction is just you take the intercept plus the beta times the t for whatever period you want to forecast. And because 2 was the t of the last period, 3 is going to be the next t. Um, and so that is our forecast of the sales using the train method. So um, we can also uh, make some functions for this process as well, running the OLS regression and getting the beta and intercept and predicting based on that beta and intercept and the T. Um, so then we can use those functions instead. And we can make one more final function that puts all these steps together, create that data frame, and then run these, uh, run the regression and predict from the regression. Now we have one function which is able to do the full uh, trend regression forecasting process. So you just give it the data frame, the name of the item that you want to forecast, and the um, number of time periods that you want to forecast it or the, the uh, T value of the time period that you want to forecast. So if two was your last historical, then three is one period into the future. 
And then we can just use that function on the sales, the cost of goods sold, and that will allow us to get our forecast here. Um, and you can feel free to take these functions into your own model to do this as well. So then we also have the compounded annual growth rate approach. So um, we can still use that data frame which was set up for the forecasting. So let's take the one for sales. Um, and now we want to calculate this uh, CAGR formula. So we want to get the first sales so we can use uh, .iloc to get the first value and uh, the last value. So we said that is y0 and yt. Um, and we can get the number of time periods uh, by doing the same thing on the t variable. So two time periods elapsed uh, between the first and the last period. And then we can just calculate the uh, CAGR formula. And we have the, the CAGR. Um, and then we'll want to uh, apply that going forward into the future. Um, so to apply that, then you just um, multiply the uh, last value, the yt, times 1 plus the compounded annual growth rate to the power of the number of periods in the future that you want to uh, forecast. Um, oh, <laughs> that's how you do exponents in Python. I'm a little tired today. Um, so there we go. That's our uh, forecasted value. And now we can um, put that into um, formula into functions, one that uh, gets the compounded annual growth rate doing those steps we just looked at, and the other which uh, creates the forecast from that compounded annual growth rate. Um, so using those two functions, then we can get the forecasted value, and we can put those together into one final function, which it's the forecast data frame, calculates the compounded annual growth rate, and applies that into the future. Uh, one function which does it all for the CAGR approach. And then we can use it in the same way as that um, the regular trend approach. Um, and we get the results there. So that was all working with the levels of the sales and cost of goods sold, but um, usually cost of goods sold is forecasted as a percentage of sales. So let's look at doing that. So the first thing that we want to do is create a row in our data frame, which represents the cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales. So I'm going to assign a new row um, by taking the cost of goods sold divided by the um, sales. And then we've already built out these forecasting uh, functions, so we can just use them on that percentage as well. Uh, with the trend, we would estimate that the next period's uh, cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales would be 57%. And then we just multiply that by the forecasted sales value, and that gets us our cost of goods sold forecast. So to kind of put everything together from this exercise, uh, let's make one more function here, which um, you can give it the name of the method that you want to use. Um, and it's going to uh, run that particular forecast method. So using the uh, two functions which we developed for the uh, trend regression and the, the CAGR approach, as well as just uh, taking the most recent value and taking the average of the historical values, um, all these now incorporated into one function. So now we have these four different methods, um, and um, we want to forecast the next period. So then we're going to go through each method, and we're going to forecast sales by that method. And then uh, for each of those uh, sales methods, we're going to go through the methods again for the cost of goods sold. 
And then within that, we're going to forecast the levels of the cost of goods sold and forecast the uh, percentage. Cost of goods sold is a percentage of revenue and uh, calculate the levels based on that. So when we do that, then we get um, lots of different results here for possible um, results for the cost of goods sold, depending on uh, which method was used for the sales and which method was used for the cost of goods sold and whether the levels of the cost of goods sold or the percentage of sales of cost of goods sold was forecasted. So lots of options here, even with just the simple forecasting models. Um, and since there were so many approaches here, it's useful to visualize that. It's kind of hard to read all this text output. Um, so we can use a box plot to look at the distribution of these forecasts. And that shows us that the forecasts basically go down to about uh, 620 or so, 625 maybe, up to like seven, almost 720. Um, but most of the forecasts lie between uh, 650 and uh, 690. Um, so now we have an idea of kind of the general range of the forecast, depending on the method that we choose. So that's a quick overview on how to use the uh, four different uh, simple time series models that we're covering in this course and applying it to both levels and percentages of items. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.